And we'd like to turn to John chapter 15. I'm going to read some verses that we could all, um, we all know what the passage is. We all know what the passage is uh, about. Uh, but John chapter 15, this great section of the word of God speaks about the vine and the branches. And we'll read the first eight verses. Jesus is speaking, of course, and he says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abideth in the vine, no more can ye ex except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. If a man abideth not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered, and men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. And we do ask God to bless his word to us. So it's really clear, we know the passage, we know what Jesus is saying. He's telling us that we should remain in him. He's encouraging us to remain um, intimately connected to him. Um, he's told us that he is the vine, we are the branches, that we have to be fruitful branches. And an abundance of fruit brings glory to our Father. Every believer is to be fruitful. Every single believer is to be fruitful. And so we need to understand what Jesus means about being fruitful. What is it that he's referring to when he speaks of fruitfulness? As I've said before, um, as I've touched on these verses before, that the fruit that Jesus is speaking about is the fruit of the Spirit. He's, he's speaking about the, the fruit of the Spirit. That's what we all have to be abundant in. And the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. Jesus is saying that to glorify God, we must exhibit an abundance of these things in our lives. We should be exhibiting abundant love, abundant joy, abundant peace, abundant long-suffering, abundant gentleness, goodness, and faith. This is a massive demand that the Lord Jesus is making of us. It's a, a huge demand. But he doesn't leave it there. He adds to the weight of it. He adds to the weight of being abundantly fruitful in these things. In verse 2, he says, Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And then in verse 6, If a man abide, abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they're burned. Well, that's just adding an extra weight on top of what he's already said. It's a massive ask that he's making of human beings, and then he's putting this on top. If you're not abundantly fruitful, if you're not fruitful for the Lord God Almighty, 
then this is the danger. And so we can see with the Apostle Paul, when Paul was thinking about his ministry, Paul said, who is sufficient for these things? When we're thinking about the, the need for us to be abundantly fruitful, we say the same thing. Who is sufficient for these things? Which one of us tonight is confident that we can by ourselves produce fruit? And so that's why we rejoice at the encouragements that's in, that are in this passage tonight. We rejoice that this wee passage encourages us. Um, and we need that, don't we? The title for the message tonight is, I think it's an encouraging title on its own. Only withered branches are cast into the fire. Only withered branches are cast into the fire. So there are, there are three encouragements that I wanted to touch on really, really briefly tonight. And the first is this. We bear the fruit which Christ produces. We bear the fruit that Christ produces. Verse 4. Abide in me and I in you, as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. That is such an encouraging few verses. Those verses really should encourage the, the heart of the believer who's heard from Jesus that unless you are abundantly fruitful, you won't be glorifying the Father. We read, the fruit in which you will be abundant is the fruit that I produce. That's great. Absolutely marvelous. You see, the fruit is produced by the life of the vine. Now, I know I'm preaching to the converted, but I want to encourage us tonight because there are times when we, we maybe feel like um, we're not doing what we thought we should be or ought to be and other people perhaps are telling us that we've not been as as we should have been and and oh we put pressure on ourselves to produce let me just say you cannot produce the fruit how can you produce the fruit. The fruit is the result of the life of the vine flowing through the branches. The life of the vine, Christ flowing through us. You see, the fruit of the Spirit that we've mentioned is actually the character, we know this, actually the character of the Lord Jesus Christ. When we read in Galatians 5, 22 and 23, we're describing Jesus Christ himself. That's, he is the one who is all these things in abundance, in an overflowing abundance. So if it is the character of the Lord Jesus Christ, we simply cannot produce that. No matter how hard we try, we cannot produce Now, I know some folks don't like that. And I know some people would rather get their sleeves rolled up and get on with it to produce something that God will be impressed by. Even love, joy, peace, long-suffering, and gentleness, and all the, the rest of the fruit of the Spirit. We, we try so hard. You've heard it. I've heard it. Concentrate on one aspect of the fruit of the Spirit. Begin with love, cultivate love, and when you've cultivated love, move on to joy. When you've cultivated joy, move on to peace. I'm here to tell you, if that's your thinking tonight, don't bother. Don't you bother trying to cultivate love in your life the way that it's going to bring great glory to God, because you'll never, ever do it. That's a 
terrible teaching as far as I'm concerned. The only one that can love to please God is the Savior. The only one who has all these aspects in abundance to please the Father is Christ himself. No, only Jesus can produce the fruit. We have the privilege of being the bearers of the fruit. Isn't that a beautiful privilege that he's given us? I hope your version says that we've been asked to bear fruit, bear much fruit, because that's what it is. We are not asked to produce anything. We are, we are given the privilege of bearing the fruit that Jesus produces. In other words, we've been given the, the privilege of putting that fruit on display in our lives. To put it another way, our, our uh, privilege is to demonstrate in our lives the fruit that Christ's life in us is producing. That's a marvel to me because I know what I'm like and you know what you're like. And so what is your responsibility then? Do we sit back and do nothing and just wait for the Lord to produce in us the different aspects of the fruit that he's looking for. Well, the fact of the matter is we do have a responsibility and our responsibility is what? If we are the bearers of the fruit Christ produces in us, then our responsibility is to live in such a way that we take care of that connection with Jesus Christ that we should live our lives in such a way that the union between the vine and the branches remains healthy and clean and pure so that his life can flow through us without hindrance. And when the life of Christ flows through us without hindrance, the fruit is produced and we display it. Is that not great? That's an encouragement when Jesus says you have to be abundantly fruitful in order to glorify the Father. You see, we mustn't live in a fleshly way if we are wanting to be fruitful for God because that fleshy, fleshly living will be a, a, ham, a hamper or a hindrance to the life of Christ. Uh, Paul tells us that the the, the the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to the other so that you cannot do the thing that you would. In other words, if you live according to the flesh, you're going to hamper or hindrance, be a hindrance to the production of the fruit in your life. You've got to keep that connection clear. So that's the first encouragement, briefly, very briefly, that Jesus produces the fruit that we display. He produces the fruit and he gives us the privilege of showing the world the fruit that marks him as wonderful and holy and pure. The second uh, encouragement, is this, we find it in verse 2, that we are purged to make us more fruitful. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. So we are the branches, Christ is the vine, his life flowing through us, makes us fruitful. However, God wants abundant fruit. And what God does in the life of the Christian, in the life of the branch, is to make us more fruitful by pruning us. Oh, we've heard this, haven't we? We know this. This is the great encouragement, number two, that we are pruned by God in order to be more fruitful for him. And we need to see that. We really always need to keep that in our minds because sometimes we labor under the misunderstanding that our afflictions hamper our fruitfulness, but they don't. 
We live under the misunderstanding that when things are not going right in our lives and we're feeling the, the pain of whatever the situation is, that our fruitfulness is being hindered. It isn't. That's not the case. Uh, that's not the case. The Father is using these things in his holy hands, this wonderful vine dresser, taking care of the vine, getting rid of the bits and pieces that shouldn't be there, cutting in to remove them so that the life of Christ can flow with even more power and, and the even more fullness through the branch so that we produce or he produces through us this abundant fruit. It can be painful though. Pruning is painful. I wonder if a, if a bush or um, a plant could speak. I wonder how it would react to the gardener getting into it with the secateurs and cutting it back and pruning it. I wonder if it would say, you know, that is quite painful when you do that. That hurts me when you do that. Because you see, it hurts me when God does that to me. Does it hurt you? There are times when God's pruning causes you pain. But the writer to the Hebrews says in 12, 11, no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. So it's painful at the time, but when it's done, the fruit is seen in even greater abundance than before. And here's the thing, if being abundantly fruitful brings glory to God, as we're told in verse 8, if being abundantly fruitful brings glory to God, then even his sometimes painful pruning must also be to the glory of God. If God is pruning you at the moment, it's for his glory. It's not to cause you pain, although pain may result. God prunes us so that he will be glorified even more when the fruit is seen in our lives. Don't you love the Father? Don't you just love that the way God deals with us? That, as I've said before, the, the cutting isn't, isn't, it's not about God putting you in your place and sorting you out. Oh, we need to get rid of these thoughts. God's pruning is branches so that the day will come when we are seen by him and by others as being so like Christ that he is glorified beyond what we could imagine. So the Father prepares us for this increased blessing. That's the, the second encouragement. Jesus produces the fruit that we bear, hallelujah, the fruit that he tells us to, to bear. He produces it and then the Father works on us to prepare us to be even more fruitful for his greater glory. But you know, the reason I wanted to come to this passage tonight was verse 6, really. This is the final encouragement. Verse 6 says, If a man abideth not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. That's an encouragement to us tonight. You know, I, I know you read that as I read that, and, and the first thing we see is that this is a warning from Christ. Jesus is warning us to be fruitful, because if we're not fruitful, we are thrown into the fire as withered branches. Is that what Jesus is saying? Jesus is saying that there is a real need to remain in me. And so it is 
a warning, but is it not also an encouragement to us? Because do you know what that verse is saying, verse 6? That verse is saying that only withered branches are cast into the fire. Only withered branches are cast into the fire. And that should encourage us. Why? Well, we are here tonight. How long have you been coming to the church? How long have you been coming to the prayer meetings? How long have you been serving the Lord here in this place? Isn't that marvelous? You're here tonight. You're here in this place. You see, left to ourselves, left to our own devices, we would have been cast aside already as withered branches to be consumed by the fire. We'd have been cast aside and burned already. But here we are. What does that mean? If withered branches are cast aside and burned, it means we are not withered branches tonight. It means we are here tonight as green branches, that Jesus Christ has kept us as green branches. Do you know what it means? It means that Jesus has made sure that the spiritual sap of his holy life has continued to flow in the people in this room and those that belong to our church watching online. Isn't it marvelous? He's made sure that the sap is still running through your veins. Praise the Lord. He's made sure that the branches have remained green in order to be fruitful. I, I really hope you can see that, and I hope you can get the excitement that comes from that, that our very presence here tonight is a declaration that the life of Christ is flowing through us, producing fruit. Whether we can see it or not, other people can see it in you. Isn't it marvelous? What a savior is the Lord Jesus Christ. He does what needs to be done. And but sap keeps flowing. We who have been kept by the power of God through faith. Being prepared to be fruitful and to receive salvation, the fullness of salvation at the end of the day. You've been called, I've been called to be the bearer of abundant fruit that will bring glory to God. An abundance of the fruit of the Spirit in our lives. Christ produces it. Hallelujah. What an encouragement. We are worked upon by our Father in order to make us even more fruitful. Hallelujah. What an encouragement. If we're going through something right now, I hope you're not getting to the point tonight where you're thinking, oh, come on. Come on. Get to the end of this. No, no, I don't mean that. Come on. You don't know what I'm going through. You keep saying these things, Pastor. Yeah, and I'm going to keep saying them. Do you know why? Because it's in here. The Bible tells me that my Father in heaven will do what needs to be done in me, on me, to make me an, an instrument of glory for him, to make sure that my life glorifies the Father. You know, glad about that tonight, that that's exactly what God does with you. What an encouragement that our Father works upon us. But what a wonderful encouragement it is that Jesus keeps the life going. It's not about you keeping the life going. We just heard we don't produce the fruit, we bear it. But it's not even about you to keep the life going. You keep the connection with the vine pure, but he does everything else. The life flows. Oh, I want the life of Jesus Christ to be raging through me. Don't you want that in your life, in this church, that the life of Christ just flows and flows and flows? Well, hallelujah, I have got nothing to do with making it happen except remaining close to him. He does it. Oh, Jesus says, 
You have to be abundantly fruitful to bring glory to the Father. And then he tells you, and I do it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you give us the privilege of displaying abundant fruit as Christ produces it. Help us to just submit to your pruning with the hope and with the certain hope that it will result in more glory going to your great name. Help us tonight as we pray to just have these ideas, these thoughts in our minds and in our hearts and inspire us, O oh God, to uh, call out to you, our great vine dresser. We want to glorify you, Lord God, in this place. We want this church to be known as a church where the fruit of the Spirit is overflowing in this place. Oh, Father, would you do it? Lord Jesus, will you do it? Holy Spirit, will you enable it? For we ask it all in the precious name of our Savior. Amen.